What is up, good people of the internet? I'm your host, Baz, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we've got an all-new month in review for you. I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on the new J. Cole record, Death From Above 1979, the debut record of Genesis Owusu, and more, but first, I want to break down a few things. To everybody that subscribed from either the Rough Criminal interview or the Five Points Vids interview I did last week, thank you so much for that. It's crazy to think we already reached my subscriber goal for the end of the year, and it's not even June yet. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, however, I would really appreciate it if you would consider supporting what I do. It's completely free, and if you don't like what I'm doing down the road, you're more than welcome to unsubscribe. However, in the case that you're feeling financially generous, there's always the Baz Merge store, where I sell t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, and stickers of all kinds, so if you do end up doing that, make sure you use the promo code BAZ for 25% off of your order. I also want to give a shout out to other creators that had me on their channel, specifically Mickey T and Nicholas Rogers. I was featured on the Taped Podcast, where I talked about Outkast discography, ranking their albums from worst to best, and I was also given the opportunity to come on Nicholas's channel to do an interview. Both links are down in the description if you want to see me in a more casual light. And last but not least, if you want to engage further with my content, you can always join the Baz Reviews Discord or give me a follow on Instagram at Baz Reviews. I am always down to meet new people and talk music whenever I have the chance. So with all that out of the way, we'll start off May with a journey to Cole World because the Charlotte-based rapper finally returned on May 14th with his latest follow-up to 2018's KOD, The Off Season. And I'll be honest, I've never been the biggest J. Cole fan, and I know that take won't sit well with a fair amount of people out there. I just haven't found much of his work to be as interesting or progressive as some people have described it to be. Anyways, me being the benevolent, zealous music critic and YouTuber that I am, I figured it'd only be fair to give this album a chance and... Oh, fuck it, yeah, this wasn't that great. If what he said in this tweet was true, I definitely have a few questions. After a few listens, I think this album has the least amount of impact on his discography. The biggest red flag here was the fact that I could never figure out what identity Cole was taking on. At least he had an idea of what he wanted to do on pretty much every one of his projects up until this point, but now I can't really tell if he wants to return to his origins and keep the 90s alive, or appease his more modern audience by being a trap flow specialist. The result is a disaster at times, with his awkward deliveries clashing against the often poorly mixed trap cuts. The only one of those worth mentioning is My Life with 21 Savage and Murray, and I'll concede it's one of the better offerings on here. Overall, I do think he was better suited on the mellower songs like Applying Pressure, Punchin' in the Clock, or Clothes, with Clothes being my favorite on the whole album. Other than those four measly songs that, may I add, were basically a rehash of his exact musical ideas for the past 10 years, the offseason is merely another run-of-the-mill outing from J. Cole that will likely be forgotten sooner than you think. I gave this album a 5 out of 10. And what a better way to keep continuity here by segueing from talking about a well-known artist to an otherwise blind listen on my part. This is Blue Summer by Wosom, and I hadn't heard about this producer until recently, but when I saw the features list for this album, well, I was sold. My experience was a bit on the contrary, though. Blue Summer is actually a harder record to get through. That is by no means a knock against Wosom's production, because it was actually pretty solid for the majority of the project. Some of these voices I liked on their own ended up not meshing well with Wosom's style, which really didn't bring a lot of cohesion to the songs at hand. Take a look at Young Lean, for example. He's on 6 of the 16 tracks, and I maybe only liked 2 of the ones that he was on. Not only that, but whether we're talking Violet Gold, Empty Lightning, or Pray For Me, I found myself skipping through tracks a bit more often than I would have wanted to. I'm taking the weird features with a grain of salt though, because there are honestly some really sick tracks that I'll be putting on full blast for the upcoming summer. I can't tell you how refreshing songs like Only Light with Tyboy Digital, Nothing Matters in Excelsior with Blade, The Yeah You Know featured Good For You in Heaven's Store, as well as Notice Me were. For what it's worth, it's not outstanding, but the potential is clearly here. When I looked through Wosom's genius credits and saw him tied to some of my personal favorite Drain Gang songs like Can't Trust with Young Lean and Tadboy Digital and I'm Not Tired with Blade, there's nowhere to go but up, either as a singles-only producer or with another full-length album. I gave Blue Summer a 6.5 out of 10. So shifting gears here to Drunk Tank Pink by Shame, post-punk on its own is super cool, but I don't think anything makes an album better than when you've had it recommended to you by a fair amount of people. The London-based group is in the forefront of the UK post-punk revival scene with groups like Idols and Fontaine's DC, and they just dropped their sophomore outing a few months ago. I think it's fair to say Dead Oceans has some real talent on their hands because I ended up enjoying this project quite a bit. While I've seen a fair amount of people argue that this album is pretty stale on various platforms, I don't think you can argue that it packs a lot of energy across the 41-minute runtime. Some standouts for me were definitely Alphabet, March Day, Water in the Well, Snow Day, Great Dog, and 6-1. That being said, I specifically want to touch a bit more on Born Luton, Human for a Minute, and Station Wagon. Sonically, they were the outliers on here. I don't have a problem with the lyrical content or anything, because they give a decent showing in that department. Unfortunately, all three of these tracks come off as clunky in what was otherwise a rather cohesive project. I was also not the biggest fan of Nigel Hitter, which, in fairness, might be the least original song Shane put together on the project. 
At the end of the day, I think the pros of the album definitely outweigh the cons, and I hope you guys give Drunk Tank Pink a whirl if you're wanting to get into the scene. I gave this album a 7.5 out of 10. Keeping on the punk train here, I've also got a review of the new Death From Above 1979 album, and as the title suggests, it's for lovers, and also alt-right fans alike. Look, I'm aware of the controversies behind the group in the past, but I'm usually someone who can separate art from the artist. If this is something that offends you, I understand completely, so if you need to skip ahead in the video, that's fine. If you're still here with me though, hey, thanks for watching. The Rockers from the North of the Border put out their fourth full-length studio album earlier this spring, and I was surprised to see more mixed reviews for it. I for one certainly connected more with this record than with Drunk Tank Pink. I don't know, I guess I have a weird love for songs that would sound like they could be in a FIFA game because, damn it, they put together some amazing soundtracks. Aside from the opener Modern Guy, 1 Plus 1 and Onwards are some of the most infectious songs of 2021. Be it Free Animal, NYC Power Elite Part 1, Totally Wiped Out, Glass Homes, or this album's own respective sonic outlier Love Letter, Jesse Keeler and Sebastian Granger really hit their stride after a near four-year absence. Despite a very strong middle section, longtime fans of my content will know that I'm a stickler for albums having a good ending. Mean Streets and No War were anything but. They sort of just felt crowbarred into the album and didn't leave a good taste in my mouth when I walked away from it. At any rate, Is For Lovers still has so much to like about it and makes a strong conviction for being one of my favorite early albums of the year. This is one that I would definitely recommend you check out as I gave it a 9 out of 10. And last but not least, we have Smiling With No Teeth by Genesis Sawusu. The Gahanian Australian singer and rapper's debut album is another one that a lot of my music friends have recommended to me, and I'm glad I ended up saving a spot for him on my review radar. A fair warning in advance that this is not going to be everyone's cup of tea though. For one, it's pretty out there despite being in an otherwise accessible genre of R&B. Secondly, the setup of this record is rather unconventional because the enjoyment sort of came in waves. Centerfold, Wait Nanya, and Drown on the front end were awesome, but the rest of the beginning and middle were a bit less interesting to me. But like Drunk Tank Pink, Smiling With No Teeth quite literally delivered a knockout punch. The final six track run is well worth the wait. The flow from I Don't See Color to Whipcracker, Easy to a Song About Fishing, and No Looking Back to Bye Bye might very well be some of the most captivating 25 to 30 minutes of music I've heard all year. Vibes on vibes on vibes, a return to the classic R&B of old, if you will. All in all, in a matter of minutes, Smiling With No Teeth went from being a mid-tier record to a very early consideration for best debut album of the year. I hope you guys take the time to give this record a listen, and I hope that your opinion will be similar. I gave this record an 8.5 out of 10. I think all five of those records are definitely worth checking out, but I also want to give a shout out to two other artists who sent me submissions. There's the Copenhagen-based artist Sweepy, who sent me his lo-fi rap album called Deleted Scenes, which I would definitely recommend. Rough Criminal also did a review on his channel if you're interested in checking that one out. Additionally, the Midwest-based artist Gutter Punk sent me his newest album, My Love on Display, which is a really cool electronic project. Both of those links are down in the description. And with all that said, thanks so much for checking this out. If there were any takes you agreed with, disagreed with, or if there are any albums you think I should be checking out down the road, feel free to drop all of those down in the comments, because I'm always looking for new albums to review. Anyways, this is Baz signing off. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Yo, in my universe is much huger. Hurling on my sweatshirt, that's in our future. MT just want to grab me, like do you understand me? I'm searching for the next thing, anywhere we can be. This ain't the stuff that I do you should leave to take a piece of wood and get inspired beautifully they didn't like the style they didn't think it suited me this is what i'm rocking with just gonna be true